Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to St. Peter's Lutheran Church on this Lord's Day, our Rally Sunday. We are glad you're here. If you're a guest with us today, we thank you for joining us. And please take a moment to fill out your contact information on the opportunity sheet that's located in your bulletin. That opportunity sheet is how you can sign up to share prayer concerns or change of address or if you'd like to meet with the pastor or sign up for any of our activities here at St. Peter's. And if you do sign up for anything on that sheet, just put it in the offering plate when it goes by later today. Today after church, there will be quiet communion if you'd like to receive the Holy Sacrament. Just come up to the front pews after the service has ended, and I will invite you to the altar rail after the rest of the congregation has departed. Also, after worship today, we have brunch. The Sunday school families have brought a number of egg bakes for us to enjoy and other goodies, and so we'll enjoy some food and fellowship, and then outside, We have some activities for kids of all ages, and you might enjoy coming out and watching some of that, too. It's going to be a fun celebratory morning. And next Sunday is God's Work, Our Hands Sunday. And we're joining together with other churches in the area, Trinity in Detroit Lakes, Grace in Detroit Lakes, First Lutheran in Audubon, first in Detroit Lakes, and us. All together, we'll be worshiping at an 11 o'clock service in the park. We will have our regular 9 o'clock service here, but then also the service at 11 o'clock. Don't forget to bring a lawn chair if you come to the service in the park. And we have a special um, musician and speaker who is coming. His name is Nate Hogue. He's from the Twin Cities. Fabulous musician and storyteller. I think you'll enjoy him very much. Um, let's see. If, uh, so yes, be sure you bring a lawn chair or blanket to sit on. The loose offering for that service will go to Lutheran Social Services. And we are collecting new socks for homeless youth. And so if you come to that service, bring a pair of new socks for the offering. And if you don't go to that service, we also have a collection bin here in the entry for you to bring new socks as well. Again, those will be for homeless youth. Tomorrow night at 6.30, the church council meets here. Wednesday evening, the choir resumes at 6.30 p.m. Are there any other announcements this morning? Well then please stand as we begin worship. It's printed in your bulletin. We gather this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are lost, Lord, and need your help to come home. Lord God, we make idols of our desires. We seek security instead of peace. Our justice turns out to be prejudice and we rationalize our hate with fears. We forget the lost, and our quest for wholeness ends when our kin and clan are safe. But aren't all people your children? You have mercy on us. Then we stop short of the intent of your grace at the warmth of our own hearts, and do not search until all the lost are found. Forgive us, Lord, for the sins we know and save us from our incomplete repentance. We pause for self-examination. People of God, take heart. This is true and worthy of full acceptance. Christ Jesus comes into the world to save sinners. He searches for us when we are lost and will search until we are found. For Christ's sake, our sins are forgiven. And we are invited to live with joy in the hope that God's mercy brings and confidently walk in the wilderness of unbelief, all to the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in singing, I've got the joy in my heart.
prayer of the day is printed right under the song there in your bulletin. Let us pray. Jesus, our good shepherd, we, like sheep, can do foolish things, following others and getting into trouble or lost. Please show me that when I think I am being cool, I may just be acting like a fool. Amen. Let's be seated. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 32, verses 7 through 14. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once, your people whom you brought up and brought, brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perverse, perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fear, fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like that star of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. And that's the first reading. And we will now read the Psalms responsibly. <clears throat> have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love and your great compassion, blot out my offenses. For I know my offenses and my sin in it and ever before me. Indeed, I was born, born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear your joy and gladness, that the body of your Lord Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. The second reading comes from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a prosecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me, for me with faith and love, that are, and love that are in Christ Jesus. The Satan is sure and worthy of full acceptance, and Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason I receive mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of ages, immortal and visible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That's the second reading. Please stand for the reading of our Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for this Lord's Day comes from St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Read this with me. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were crumbling and saying, 
This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. And I invite the children to come up for the children's message. Come on down. Oh, it's so good to see you guys. Yay, what a good day. It's going to be a fun day today because we get to not only see all of you again, but we get to do some really super fun, extra fun things after church today. So, but before we get started, I need your help with something. Would you be able to help me with something super quick? because I have lost something that is precious to me. I have lost my sheep. Here, let me show you a picture of my sheep. Isn't he cute? I have lost my sheep, and I have lost my coin, and I need your help to find them. They look exactly like this. They're somewhere in here, and I don't know where I put them, but I was wondering if maybe you could help me search for them. Could you do that? Let's do, let's go, let's look, come on. Look around. Where did I put my coin and my sheep? My coin and my sheep. They could be anywhere. They could be anywhere. They could, people could be sitting on them for all I know. I don't know where they are. Help me find them. Do you see them? Oh, you found a coin. You found the coin. Good job. But where's my sheep? Where is my sheep? Oh, I love him so. Where could he be? I don't know. I think maybe if Eli went to the place where he usually sits, he might find something around there. I don't know. That sheep always liked Eli, so it might be over. Eli, where do you usually sit in church? Where, where? Yeah, maybe you should go check there. I don't know. I don't know. That might be a good spot to look. You see him? Do you see him? Did he go back there? Did he go back there? Oh, he did. That silly sheep. I knew it. I knew it. All right, now bring me my sheep and my coin. I've got my coin. Here's my sheep. All right. Well, thank you. I feel so much better. Now, here, let's sit down because I want to talk to you for just a second about a story that Jesus tells us today. He tells a story about a man who has a lot of sheep. Do you remember how many sheep he had? Yeah? Well, the lady had 10 coins, so that was a good number to remember. But the man who had sheep, do you remember how many sheep he had? He had 100 sheep. And one of them goes astray. So then did the shepherd say, oh well, I still have 99 sheep, so that's good enough. Is that what he said? No, what did he do? Yes, he went hunting and hunting and he wouldn't stop until he found the one sheep that was lost. And the lady that lost, well, she lost one coin, did she say, oh, it's okay, I still have nine coins. No, what did she do? Yeah? She looked and looked and looked and did she find it? 
She did, she found it. And so Jesus tells these two stories to tell us about how Jesus loves us and how Jesus will always, always, always want us to be near to him. He's always, always, always looking for ways to draw us closer to him. Never gives up on us. Never, ever gives up on us. That's pretty good, isn't it? I love that message, and I hope that's one you always remember. So let's bow our heads and pray today. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you love us. And even when we feel really lost, that you come and find us. That we're never truly lost because you are in our hearts. Lord, bless these children today and every day. Bless them as a new Sunday school year starts. And bless all of our teachers as well. We lift up all the prayers in our hearts and that we know that you hear them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you can come and grab a sucker on your way up if you want. And the congregation at this time, we get to sing again. We get to sing, Do Lord. It's all ready to go alive. Let's join together in prayer this morning. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day that you have given us. We thank you for this time together to listen for your word. We thank you for this space where we can let your word speak into our hearts breathe into our lives. Give us wisdom for the days to come to help us deal with our struggles we face. And so, Lord, turn our thoughts to you during this time of worship. Be near to us in Jesus' name. Amen. I've been listening to a podcast this last week it is an eight-part podcast, half-hour episodes, all about the investigation into the Jacob Wetterling case and why it took so long to solve. The podcast was set to be released next week, but due to the confession of the murderer and the media coverage that has followed, they decided to release it earlier. It's just as sad and horrifying to listen to as you can imagine. I was a sophomore in college 27 years ago, the fall that Jacob Wetterling disappeared. I remember our campus pastor at the time, Phil Holton. Some of you might know him. I remember him praying at our Wednesday night communion service, praying for Jacob and his family. And over the 27 years that have followed, we've all heard his name, we've seen his picture frozen in time. We've thought about him 
the lost boy, the taken boy. He became our boy. And now that we know the full story about what happened to our Jacob, our hearts break all over again for his family and for the knowledge that such brokenness can exist, such evil. And today is the 15th anniversary of the bombing of the World Trade Center. 15 years. At the time it happened, Chad and I were newly married. We were living in western New York. And I was sitting in my office in the church, and I was wondering why the ladies who were supposed to come and open up the food pantry in our church, why they weren't there yet. And finally the phone rang, and it was one of the ladies, and she said, I'm sorry I'm not there yet, but I can't stop watching the news. Did you hear what happened? And so she told me, and of course I ran across the lawn to my house so I could turn on the news and I could watch myself. And I bet every one of you who can remember 15 years ago today, you remember exactly where you were, exactly what you were doing. Because that's how it is when you live through days like that, days when your heart breaks for the brokenness that can happen in our world, such evil. And so our gospel for today, it talks about lost things. And I, I think we all know something about losses, right? We can know a loss of a sense of safety and security when we're terrified to let our children out of our sight. We can know a loss of a sense of faith in humanity or maybe even God when airplanes turn into bombs and thousands of lives are lost. We can lose hope if healing doesn't come and the pain doesn't end. We can lose confidence in ourselves, pretty sure we're just never going to get it right. We can lose our joy, struggling under the weight of our daily struggles and work and stress. We can even lose our ability to dream, forgetting about things like possibility and goals. The gospel for today, it's kind of right in the heart of um, the Gospel of Luke. It's the, it's the lost and found section of Luke, actually, because there's three lost and found stories that happen right in a row. Two of them we get to hear today, a woman and her lost coin, a shepherd and some lost sheep. And the third story that comes right after this is known as the lost son, or sometimes we call him the prodigal son. And these texts each end with talking about the joy in heaven that there is over a sinner that repents. It's interesting that even though these stories are called the lost sheep and the lost coin, they actually focus a lot more on the diligent work of that shepherd who will not stop looking for the sheep that's lost and the diligence of that woman who loses that one coin but she she won't stop until she finds it and the reason that Jesus tells these stories you probably noticed in the gospel we read it together that the Pharisees and the scribes they were grumbling they were grumbling because Jesus he wanted to spend time with the sinners Jesus, he was always doing that. Spending time with the sinners. He even ate meals with them, you know. But his, his only agenda was that he wanted to love people and to let as many people know that, that they were loved by God. And it was as simple as that. He didn't really spend a lot of time worrying about what the Pharisees and the scribes thought about it. So now picture with me for just a moment. The grassy field, a nice meadow, there's a flock of sheep, and they're grazing happily. And there's one sheep who's, 
who's following a particularly choice line of grass and, and he wanders down the hill a little bit and maybe, maybe around the corner behind some trees and, and before he knows it, he's separated from his shepherd. He's lost. He's separated from his flock. And the good shepherd realizes this and the good shepherd won't rest until he has found that one. That one sheep matters to the shepherd. When he finds it, he rejoices, he lays it on his shoulders, he brings it back to the field. And the thing is, is that we matter to God, too. It's always an amazing thought for me to think of that, that we matter to God. That whether we are people who are here every Sunday or hardly ever, or whether we're people who read our Bibles every day, or whether we're not quite sure where our Bible is right now, or whether we whether our language is always pristine or whether we've been known to utter a cuss word now and then, whether we are Republican or Democrat, sober or not even close, full of achievements or simply counting it as victory that we got dressed today. (laughs) We matter to God, every single one of us, that each of us are sinners, but that each of us also have a God who pursues us, will not rest until we are drawn into the fold. I felt really, you know, warm and good as I was writing that down. Just really felt nice, you know. Until I had this horrible thought. I remember thinking, what if, though, what if the sinners that Jesus was welcoming and eating with were people like Danny Heinrich, the murderer of Jacob Wetterling, or people who hijacked planes on 9-11? And there's a part of me that feels sick to my stomach when I even think about it. Because when I think of those sinners that Jesus would hang out with, you know, I think of maybe... Maybe they were some tattooed, pierced folks, you know. Maybe they drank a little too much or they liked to cuss a little bit. Maybe they made some mistakes, but they had a heart of gold, right? You know? Because it's easy for me to deal with the minor league sinners. It's easy for me to put myself near to them and say, yeah, me, I'm a sinner too. Me with my garden variety of sins and mistakes. Yeah, we're all sinners. But me and Danny Heinrich, me and some plain hijackers, don't tell me we have anything in common. Because isn't there some sin that's just too much to be forgiven? Dear God, isn't there some category of sin that's just beyond your grace? You see, the grace that I would be able to hand out does have limits. But God's doesn't. Yes, there's God's judgment, and yes, there's punishment, from ev- but from everything we know about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth is that for a truly contrite and repentant heart, there's always grace. And when I grumble about that, I'm no different than the scribes and the Pharisees who said, this fellow, this fellow, he welcomes sinners, he eats with them. When I grumble about that, then I've forgotten that Jesus came to conquer sin and death, even the sickest sin, even the darkest death. Jesus didn't just come to be the Lord of our potlucks and our rally Sundays and our our happy Easter mornings, but to be with us in the dark when we face the worst kind of loss, when we come face to face with evil itself. 
and yet I have been grumbling. I've spent a lot of time in tears the last week thinking about Jacob. As the mother of young boys now, I think about Jacob a lot differently than I ever could when I was a college kid. I think about how I would do anything to keep my boys safe from harm. I feel such deep sadness and such deep anger. And it's so easy to descend into a really dark place thinking about it because we never will understand it. Jesus is the Lord of the lost and found and I thank God it's not me because this week that message of amazing grace for even the gravest of sins is a little too overwhelming for me. My compassion runs too thin and God will have to forgive me for that. And so what can we do when the bad news seems too big? What can be done when you find it hard to forgive? I heard some good news in what Patty Wetterling said on the day that Danny Heinrich confessed. She said, say a prayer, light a candle, be with friends, play with your children, giggle, hold hands, Eat ice cream, create joy, help your neighbor. That is what will bring me comfort today. So let's pray. Dear God, what a day this is. We pray for the Wetterling family, God. A mystery solved after so many years, but such a sad ending. And so we pray for families everywhere. Surround them with your grace and your peace and your love. Lord, we pray for all the families who are affected by the events of 9-11. Pray for our nation who still reels from it, will never forget it. We pray for our whole nation, for our world, that your peace can reign somehow still. Don't let us lose hope in that, God. And let us be vessels of your joy. Help us somehow to extend it in some small way today as we leave this place. Let your word, your light go with us. In Jesus' name, amen. And we are going to switch the hymn. I wanted to do Amazing Grace at this time, so that's 779.
Let's stand and we'll sing, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. about to pray for others. This is both a responsibility and a privilege. We're called to follow up our prayers with Christ's kind of action. Let us pray. Home loving God, you are like someone who treasures all things in her household, grieving over even the smallest that become lost. Please enlarge the scope of our compassion until our prayers align with your wide love for all people on earth. We pray for those whom we do not know. Many are, many are to us only statistics. Please be with each individual in their trauma and grief and bless every compassionate voice and hand that reaches out to them. We pray for children everywhere. Keep our little ones safe and help us to raise them with love and wisdom. Be very near to the Wetterling family and all those who have endured the immense suffering of the loss of a child. Bring your peace that passes all understanding. Home loving God, we pray now for our nearest and dearest, especially for any who are bewildered, rebellious, lost, hurting or sorrowing. Like a mother who treasures each individual and seeks the good of all, so please be with those who are precious to us. We pray now the prayer you taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The final blessing is one that we will share in together. The Lord is very near. There is no need to worry. Let us go in peace, holding to what is good, helping those in need, and rejoicing always in the great goodness of our God. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And for our closing song, we'll go back and we'll sing, God is so good. Mm -hmm.